Thank you. Thank you. Right into the chat. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, the next item, um, C, dual accreditation, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Orson. So this is actually, uh, in fairness, we've uh, eliminated two names from this list. This will be uh, both Marshall and I, and then also uh, Dr. Irwin and Dr. Carter are uh, kind of bringing this. And to give you the punchline, um, what we're proposing is to add something to the vote voting agenda this evening as a response for dual accreditation through an agency called the Georgia Accrediting Commission. Uh, we have a representative of that agency here. He's had the patience of Job over the last three hours, and he's here to answer any questions. Uh, that you may have and also to explain any of those processes just so folks feel like they have full information. Um, we've also tried to circulate drafts of this document so you can get familiar with what we're talking about here. I'll give a brief uh, five-minute overview. Potentially all of you should have the actual text of the proposal at your desk right now. Uh, it was passed out with a strategic planning document. Um, just let me know if you don't have a copy and we'll, we'll get a copy to you. Um, the net net is uh, obviously, we've been uh, getting some interest in the external community broadly in dual accreditation. And as we began to look into this, I think there was consensus among, you know, at least the four of us and potentially others that we've spoken to as well, um, that this was an opportunity for more uh, accountability in the system. What we're not trying to do here is in any way replace SACs. We're not trying in any way to undermine SACs nor are we trying to send a message that we don't believe we are 100% confident that we will maintain SACS accreditation. I think this board is confident. I think we're confident in the superintendent and his staff. Uh, we fully believe we'll maintain full accreditation and SACS remains our primary, uh, primary priority right now because obviously it's important to each and every one of us that we uh, not only meet but exceed all of their standards and all of the, the things that they highlighted. What we believe this does for a minimal cost, and I'll explain the minimal cost uh, point in a moment, is offers us a chance to get a second uh, set of uh, uh, eyes on at least the high schools in the system that will give us a high school level evaluation of whether each of those schools meets accrediting criteria. So right now we're getting a great district level report from SACS, but this would also give us 22 reports on these individual high schools that will give us a little bit of information. We're asking that the schools uh, apply for that accreditation this summer. We believe, we've outlined here, that the cost of that is not to exceed $15,000. We think that uh, that is an aggressive estimate. We actually think it will be substantially less than that, and uh, Mr. Boyd can speak to that. And this would last about five years, so it's about $15,000 maximum over the course of five years. Uh, and we believe that it will be a minimal administrative burden, too, that there will be some leverage from the center, but each school should be able to execute this in a few days. Uh, with the manpower of someone in the staff, not the principal, but maybe someone on his or her staff. Um, and so that's it. The gist of it is that we would ask each of our high schools to go through this process. We would then get a report on each of those high schools and whether they met those criteria. And I believe at least, and then the others can speak up, that this would allow us to uh, gauge whether those high schools were, were performing where we want them to. Uh, and allow us to, you know, the superintendent or others to intervene where we feel like that's not the case and to focus some attention. So that's the general purpose of this and the structure of this. Um, and I welcome any other comments from the other three sponsors of this, but the idea is to vote on this this evening. And then if you need additional information on the cost and the process and the purpose, uh, we also have Mr. Boyd here who can answer some questions as well. Uh, yes, uh, John and I spoke about this uh, earlier, and uh, I'm not here to be a naysayer, so don't think that. But uh, I have concerns again, you know, as um, uh, the superintendent said, he's been on board three months, and we've been on board two months. And one of the things that you learn in life is that when you're in the middle of a river, you don't start taking on more stuff. At some point, you have to begin to look at how do you unload some things and how do you get at a, le a level of stabilization. I work with clients all the time, and the only way we can move forward is get them to a level of baseline stabilization. And I'm concerned, as I've talked with people in the community, and John and I have talked about this and discussed it and look at some of the emails that come 
forth is that uh, most of the parents are believing that this was a way out their fears and to be driven by fear concerns me we know that fear is false evidence appearing real fears in order to be able to keep accreditation for the students to go to college and to make sure that they're not stifled academically they're looking at an alternative way of making sure that their children get through school uh, I'm concerned that it is because of fear and not for other reasons of that they want to moving for move forward with this other accreditation secondary accreditation uh, my concern is that is this the right time uh, I don't think that we've with being two months on the board ourselves uh, have we done due diligence in looking at the situation I have no problem with competition I think it's great but if it's going to take place I think that there needs to be a due diligence period I think it needs to be longer than a month or so I think it needs to go into next year we look at it for the year 14 15 and moving beyond that but the other thing is also we have to have to stop looking at what are the cost factors financially because we also have to look at again what is the stress and the strain even though individual schools could do this I don't think that we need to get caught into giving individual schools the uh, uh, opportunity the authority and the power to do this it would, should be a system-wide thing again what is the cost that's going to be put on the manpower and the woman power from the central administrative staff someone has to regulate this even though we have the accrediting bodies uh, in my practice and what I do I'm accredited probably about 10 or 15 different organizations and it is not that easy they do different things but in all actuality do we have to have this in order for our children to be successful going back to what Orson says have we defined success uh, the reality is is that I think we're moving too fast I think that this needs to be something that should be tabled. We need to do due diligence. I'm concerned about the impact it would have on our administrative staff in trying to coordinate this, maintain this, the superintendent. We're in the middle of a crisis here, and I would like to see us deal with this crisis at hand and not give the community the impression that because there are few who want it, that we are abating our responsibilities in other areas to get done what SACS is asking us to do handle that situation then look at this and if we want to add it add it but I'm really concerned that we're going in and we seem to be grappling at things grappling at things that might not be a real good fit for right now even though I saw the the research and everything that you did but in talking with my people in my area and other people in John's areas and other places what I've got the consensus I talked with the mayor from Clarkson who left a voicemail for me and said I need you to support that second accreditation and he says because my concern is that Sachs is going to run away and we're not going to have accreditation and I spoke with him this morning and I asked him what were his fears and what he thought was happening was not going to happen and by the time he finished we finished speaking he said to me oh I had a different perspective I just knew that we're not going to get accreditation and this would be a way to guarantee that we have something else in case that didn't work out and I said to John this morning, when we have children, and children ask us for things, do we do that to give it to them because they're asking them, or do we teach them what's best for them and say, maybe, not right now, maybe tomorrow, let's look at it differently, and let's do what's best and put it on hold for a minute. And so I want to just give my sentiments about it, that I'm really concerned about us sort of jumping on a bandwagon and putting this and we're looking at saying, let's do this right now instead of doing the due diligence. John. May I ask, uh, so I'll uh, offer a quick response. I think um, absolutely some people want to do this um, for various reasons. I think that not all of those reasons are compelling to me. I think the reasons that are compelling are to make sure that in an equitable way we have a view of all of these schools in, the, uh, in this part of the system and we get a second set of eyes on them and we get school level appraisals. Um, I think your concern about the resources involved, not just financial but also the personnel resources, uh, was also one of our concerns. Um, and what might be helpful, I don't know if it would be helpful to everyone, but I would like to hear uh, Dr. Boyd, in case you want to hear, talk through what that process would look like for just five minutes and what resources might be required. And that way anyone who has similar questions, which I imagine most of you do, could at least hear the answer to that. And on the diligence point, I, you know, it's a fair point. I think from my perspective, now is a great time to get a baseline uh, because we're launching into a strategic plan. We're actually trying to uh, go through and rejuvenate the system. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to get a baseline. 
one reason we delayed this vote to this month rather than last month so that we could bring in Dr. Boyd so that we could do additional research. Um, again, you know, it's a great concern uh, that we've done the right amount of diligence. I, I think probably we have because of that amount of time, but obviously that's something we all need to think through. But uh, uh, Mr. Boyd, would you mind kind of introducing yourself and maybe Mr. just... Mr. Chairman, the only thing I would add is it would also be instructive if Ms. Tyson would also share with sure. you the resources and man and woman power that will be needed over the next six months to address the sex fine. And then that'll give you a comparison as to what we will have available to invest in these two or one initiatives. I'm Robert Boyd. I'm a consultant with the Georgia Accrediting Commission, and um, I visit schools all over the north end of the state. We have about 17 consultants statewide. The Georgia Accrediting Commission is 110 years old as of July 1st. This year. We have been accrediting schools all over the state of Georgia for quite some time now. Initially it was organized to improve high schools, but as we have moved down through the years, we have started accrediting elementary schools, middle schools, pre-kindergartens, kindergartens, all of those. So we are administered by a committee of professional educators from all over the state on every level. We have some from the colleges and universities. We have people from the kindergartens. We have some from elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. The Georgia Accrediting Commission is not in competition at all with SACS. I was a high school principal for many years in another system here in Metro Atlanta. And most of those years, my school was dual accredited with Georgia Accrediting Commission and SACS. The Georgia Accrediting Commission is, rep is recognized by the State Board of Regents, so we have access to all of the state colleges and universities. Even our private schools inside and outside the state recognize the Georgia Accrediting Commission. As far as I know, there has only been one school, and I can't give you the name of it because it was a small school down in Jacksonville, Florida, that at one point a few years ago turned down Georgia Accrediting Commission student. But we are recognized by even Ivy League schools receiving students from some of our schools that are not accredited by any other agency. So I don't feel that you can go wrong with a dual accrediting situation. The accrediting with Georgia Accrediting Commission uh, will not be that costly, neither will it be that time consuming with your staff. I believe with something like 22 high schools that we could accredit, we could visit your 22 high schools with approximately four um, consultant days uh, for, I mean, uh, 12 consultant days using four consultants. We could, um, I believe it would take a staff member in each school no more than um, four or five days to pull together all of the materials to document that they do what our standards call for. Um, as far as cost is concerned, it is each school pays fifty dollars per year to be a member of the Georgia Accrediting Commission. 
every five years would require another consultant visit. Uh, if the schools are prepared with their documentation, a consultant can do two high schools in one day. The um, I believe that that would not be a tremendous problem for uh, an assistant principal or local staff member in each school to pull together the documentation. Okay, I'm open for any questions that anybody might have. Dr. Boyd, just here, David Campbell. Um, how about how long does it take to go through the process of being accredited by GAC? Well, since the DeKalb County Schools were at one time members of GAC, the executive director has said we can do it with one visit. And so long as we get that in prior to the commission meeting the first weekend in September, we could get official accreditation that at, from that meeting. Okay. So there's a September meeting then? September <laughs> meeting of the commission. It meets twice a year in Macon, Georgia. Uh, to approve programs that are um, applying for accreditation. Thank you. But since DeKalb has been a member of GAC before, we're only requiring the one visit. With new schools coming on who have not been, it's a three-year process. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Um, is this a process that ha happens when students are in the schools, or can it happen uh, during the summer? Preferably, it's when the students are in the schools. We like to come in, and first thing we do is tour the whole school. We want to see the whole facility. We want to see everything you have. We walk, we check everything from restrooms to locker rooms to storage rooms, classrooms. We want to see every bit of it. We get lots of our questions answered as we tour the facility. And then we sit down with the administrator and go over the documentation. And if they're well prepared, we can, as I said, we can do two schools in one day. Now, a visitation is $250 per consultant per day plus travel reimbursement at the state reimbursement rate, which right now is 55, 56 cents a mile. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Tyson? Before we go on, Mr. I'm Chairman, sorry. Mr. Chairman, I just want to make sure that we're clear. I've heard uh, you say several times, if the documentation is all put together and, um, and well prepared, we need some more detail about the depth of the documentation and the, and the, and the manpower that's associated with what well, you're looking Well, it, it's not that difficult. It's just pulling together some things that you have in your offices already. Such as? It's just a matter of organizing them, everything from a certificate of occupancy on down. Teacher certifications and things of that nature, which you being a state school, all of that for the most part has already been taken care of. It's just a matter of pulling it together, making sure that all of the teachers are properly certified and things of that nature. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nice. That you have the right kind of personnel too for the numbers of students you have in the building. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah, Mayfield. Just, right, just, and just for consistency, I guess, as it relates to SACS, could you just sort of briefly describe the alignment of the accreditation standards uh, of GAC with SACS? 
the Georgia Accrediting Commission focuses primarily on the local school. It does not, I don't remember any standards that relate to the Board of Education or the central staff other than the superintendent. Um, Ms. Tyson, then I'll turn it back to John. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, Mr. Uh, Thurman has asked that we just provide you all with an overview of the work that we've done and the work that's left to do. It's real important for the Board of Education um, to understand that the district began this process in February after the appointment of the interim superintendent. And the work that we have laid out from February to May when Advance Ed came back in for a monitoring visit is that we built a framework to address the 11 required actions. In the very simple terms, we built an action plan, a scope of work, and deliverables on what we plan to do. When Advanced Ed got here in May, they came to look at the plan. What do you plan to do? They left two weeks ago. We had a very, very positive and favorable visit. We look forward to receiving a very positive report in about another 15 to 25 days. Now, that time frame again was concentrated on what do you plan to do. Now, from June to December, the work now is an immersion plan. When they get back here in December, the work they will come to look at is what did you do? What actionable evidence do you have to show what you did? And so now, we go from this point of what it is we want to do to this point of what is it that you've actually done. We will begin the work to immerse now every one of these action plans at the grassroots level from a board member all the way to a custodian in a building. Our principals will be coming in for a summer leadership conference on June 24th. We will have every principal, every assistant principal, every counselor. 600 administrators gathered at Tucker High School so that they will now receive the executing action plans, that they will go back now and start to work with every staff member, every support staff member in their building so that we can now take this plan and turn it into actual work that will involve teachers, it will involve assistant principals, it will involve uh, paraprofessionals, custodians, cafeteria workers, bus drivers. Our accreditation is about our continuous efforts work to improve academic achievement. Dual accreditation is not an uncommon thing, but uh, district accreditation and individual school accreditation is apples to oranges. It is actually encouraged. I don't think there's any administrator here that would not say we are in support of a dual accreditation. What we are concerned with is competing talent resources inside of the district. Uh, there is preparation work to get ready for that visit, and we want to do due diligence in providing with them with everything that they need so that if it is the will of the board to pursue this, that it can be done right the first time out. But with the work we have to do in preparation between now and June, we will have competing resources, and we're very concerned about that, being that August is the time that you open up school. It takes every piece of manpower to get 100,000 kids in the door and get them in the seat with the right teacher, with the right wraparound services around them. And so our, our, I think what, just from our standpoint on being prepared to get ready for SACS to come back in here in December is how do we do it and do it with fidelity? on both sides so that everybody gets what they want. Again, in full support of it, but how do we, ch how do we channel competing resources, competing talent, competing um, human capital? Uh, Mr. Mayfield? Yeah, and, and I'm glad you, you made those comments, uh, Ms. Tyson, which is really sort of at the core of my question about the alignment, that if there are some derivatives that come out of our process already, uh, to help facilitate GAC accreditation, uh, it seems like it would be a win-win. Uh, if it's in conflict, however, uh, clearly, you know, we have to uh, 
we have to manage those priorities appropriately. Let me um, mention one other possibility, because I think that some various ones had spoken with our executive director over the last several weeks about doing this in August in preparation for this September board meeting. But our commission meets twice a year. They meet the first weekend in March and again the first weekend in September. This could be done in January or early February, still be able to get to the March meeting of the Georgia Accrediting Commission, and the accreditation would be retroactive to the beginning of this 2013-2014 school year. So I actually have a... What? Go ahead, uh, John. I'm sorry. So it, it, the timeline appears to be one of the concerns here with personal timelines. It seems like from what Mr. Boyd is saying that if we modified this to be uh, March rather than August, A, we would have all the information to Mr. Mayfield's point from the SACS process. B, uh, we would still, we would then have the manpower available at the beginning of the year to do this effectively. And C, we'd get the same result. We would be retroactively accredited for, you know, we'd get some information early in the process that can inform the strategic planning process. So in the interest of um, forwarding that proposal, I would actually amend our current proposal to say uh, instead of where it reads August 2013, uh, GAC expected in August 2013 for the visit, that that would say March 2014. Well, we would, we would have to do it in late January or early February to get it to our commission oh, I'm sorry. the so March meeting. February 2014. And... Um, or January, February 2000. So the exact language could be expected in January slash February 2013, 14. And that might alleviate some of the personnel concerns at least, and then also leverage the work to Mr. Mayfield's point that we're doing with SACS. Um, is there any opposition to um, the proposal that, and the amendment that John has made regarding the dual accreditation recommendation? If so, let me know by show of hands. I, I oppose. I would like to see us wait until that time. This is June. I'd like for us to revisit it at a board, as a board at the end of this year. By the time we finish dealing with the tremendous amount of work that we have to do for SACS, as I said, I have nothing against it. I think it would be great but I'd like for us to revisit it rather than setting that in stone now and saying that we're going to do it. I'd like to see where we are because when we put it in the minutes and we say that it's going to be done, we're obligated to look at that. So if I don't mind, I would really like for us to, that's what I was saying from the onset is due diligence and give it time for next year. Why cannot we revisit it in December? at that meeting and then make that decision, are we ready? Are we prepared to? Because things will change by then and we don't know what will be in place. <clears throat> so I'm not sure the process. I think, do we have to vote on the amendment to this proposal and then vote on whether to include it in the business meeting this evening? I guess we need to formally move and second it. Yeah. We need to move to amend it. Okay. So I move, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dr. Carter. Uh, Microphone. Couple things. Um, as, as, as a part of this process, uh, if we've not formally put it on the table to motion it up or down, I think you can give yourself a friendly amendment. We only have to do it one time, first of all. I'm looking for... Um, where's our yeah. parliamentarian? <laughs> parliamentarian. So, I haven't studied the agenda for tonight's meeting. Currently, I don't think you need to do it's anything. This is listed as a discussion, discussion. item. Right. right. Is it, if it's on the agenda, no, then it would need to be, somebody would need to make a motion in the seven o'clock meeting to put it on there. Uh, the one other thing that I would bring up, uh, and you probably uh, may recall, there was some email traffic on this month, a couple of months, and whenever Mr. Orson and our firm uh, weighed in on this, and so, you know, we had a disagreement of opinion, but our, our opinion is there's an existing policy on accreditation that really only relates to SACS, and so there would need to be a waiver of that policy. Although I understand Mr. Orson's point in one of his emails, there's already something in one of the policies that any time you act contrary to policy, it's deemed as if it were waived. But 
good good governance is to formally waive it in our view. I mean, so, if I can just address can, that. Can, can I finish and then, yeah. Uh, so, so two things. One, we're not on the agenda. And as a person who signed on to this, uh, I, I support the notion of dual accreditation for a variety of reasons. Um, and I think it's good for our system, and I appreciate staff walking us through the details. Uh, I was not prepared to vote on this today, so I'm not comfortable moving it onto the agenda day today. I am inclined to believe that it is imperative for us to incorporate this as a part of our strategic planning process and to have another conversation about it. I'm not ready to say I want to push it to December either. Uh, but I certainly think that it is in our best interest as an institution and a, and a body that's committed to transparency, to diligence, to academic achievement for our students to take the information we've heard today, dissect it again, and then come back to this conversation, whether at that point we're ready to put it on the agenda to vote it up or down in July. I'm very prepared to do that. Um, I think we've got more pieces to the puzzle in place now. Uh, timing is everything. I am very hesitant to redirect staff. Um, and if we've got compatibility and traction with the SACS piece, as you've mentioned, John, I think that that puts us in a much better place uh, to have this conversation and to vote on it in July. And we can agree to disagree companionably today, uh, but we're not on the agenda to vote. And so I think we owe it to ourselves to take this information your notion of amending yourself for the next meeting as as a um, action item for July. Based on that comment, do and and an effort of time, um, can we absorb this information and accept this information today? To next month, we will make a formal uh, recommendation and vote it and vote on it at that time. Is that something that we all can agree on? Uh, if if you can agree on that, just raise your hand, if you will. So far too many. Yeah. Oh, one quick thing, sure. which is to counsel, I'm fine if we've got time to make it enough. I will still disagree with you because I think we have a safe harbor in our policies, and I'm not sure even the literal reading of the accreditation provision requires says it's exclusionary. Well, we argue. But, but to the that larger time would also give us time to look at the policy issue. That well, you, I don't, we'd, we'd, we'd be rehashing the same language. I'm perfectly fine just putting that acknowledgement and exception or finding language that accommodates kind of a reading without binding us in a precedential way that I feel uncomfortable with. And I think we can then incorporate these other elements in there. And quite frankly, you know, I know whether it's we pass it today or we decide to pass it on July, first, which is our next meeting, it doesn't really change anything in terms of the, the real questions. We're going to change to a timetable of March. Mr. Boyd, is it Dr. Boyd or Mr. Boyd? No. We, um, and so, <laughs> so in essence, we take it up next month. Next and, month. But as long as we're in agreement that it will be an agenda item. All right. I just want to one, one last thing. Can I just say one last I think it's important, and Dr. Carter brought up the strategic plan. We have to begin to look at if we're going to do a strategic plan with a consultant to let some of these things be a part of that strategic plan that guide us. Because I really believe that this should be a part of that strategic plan and that it's meted out in that and that it's a part of that timeline that we're going to put together. That's what a strategic plan calls for, the timeline and the action. I want to thank you. Um, um, it's my understanding that we will take it up next month uh, based on a recommendation from the committee, okay? At this time, I uh, call for a motion to adjourn to executive session 